Once we get going, you know? Once we get going, we'll give them the swing of it. Everybody will be dancing, you know? It'll be just fine. But we'll be dancing, Philadelphia, PA, all over, all over St. Louis, and down to where else? New Orleans or something? It's the USA. Oh, it's through the USA. Okay, we'll read some things from the, uh, the new book, which I love. I think it's a beautiful book. I'm not, I'm not praising my own poetry that way, but I, uh, I just took one look at it when it first came out. And it, it's amazing. I it had nothing to do with the design or the art or anything in it, and I, I just love what they did with it. And, uh, Joan Mitchell, Untitled, 1960. I would have been happier with many of the 10 million untitled paintings in the world if they'd been left un unpainted. <laughs> you might have guessed that from the column in the, uh, in the magazine over the years. Okay, this is the one the title came from, I think, I hope. Richard Corin, Man and Wyndham, 1958. The importance of a window is that you can sit in a chair facing away from it. You need never look out a window. Maybe it's dusk out there. Maybe it's not. Who cares? Nothing is out there. Nothing of importance is happening. Pick up a book. Stare at a wall. Smoke a cigarette. Smoke many cigarettes. Do push-ups. Have a drink. Have another. Meditate on the plays of Harold Pinter. Don't watch television, unless, which is unlikely, some channel is premiering a new play by Harold Pinter. No, you're better off just tossing the TV out the window. That is another reason why a window is of such great importance. A television may seem like a window, but it is not at all like one. A television is much more like a microwave oven in an apartment without a refrigerator. Don't even toy with the idea of purchasing a computer. That would be subjecting oneself to the ultimate epistemological fraud. Be sure, however, to subscribe to a daily newspaper. Subscribe to all of them, in every city, in every language. Have the delivery boys toss them in the window. <laughs> For one thing, they, they aren't even gold. <laughs> I don't give a damn about them anyhow. <laughs> color has no value in itself. Fish of any color ought not to stand still. All painted flowers are an artificial paradise. Pink makes me puke. <laughs> Chlorophyll is wax. What if an enormous shark had risen up out of the sun and bitten, bitten Henri on the butt? <laughs> Existence would have been redeemed. Okay, this one, uh, subtly enough, is entitled Art, Tits, and God. Well, LACMA couldn't have picked a better poster girl for its upcoming exhibition, Renoir in the 20th century, than Gabrielle with a rose. And it's not his mastery of creamy pink lips and complexion or her gypsy black, gypsy wild eyes, brows, and hair, or the grayish white folds of her scarf, or the sex slave necklace against her vulnerable nudity, not even the labial entrance to the rose itself, which helps distract our gaze from her mammothly foregrounded longshoreman's forearm. It's those masterfully full, soft, firm, and gravity-defying mammaries with their barely hidden, still youthful nipples. Oh my God, who gave us such women to inexorably draw us upwards the night towards the nightly planning of our species' prospects 
planting of our species prospects. Within the fertile valley twixt her warm and welcoming mountainous thighs. Praise be unto thee, infinitely and eternally. Cezanne, the artist's father. Joachim Pissarro points out that Levin Ma, the liberal rag the artist's dad is reading, is where Zola had defended the paintings of the Impressionists as works, as the productions of the, quote, serious workers in a Marxist sense, whose work had as much true economic, social, ideological, and humane slash progressive value as the efforts of any other members of the working class. And I would agree with the truth of that, for Cezanne and Monet and Manet and Degas and Van Gogh and just about any of the artists whose names have endured enough to, to spring to mind. But I sure know plenty of self-appointed artists and worse poets of our time whose, quote, work is of value only to themselves. No, wait, they may in fact just be wasting their entire lifetimes when they could be doing something, anything, that they are better at just as I gave up playing the piano for drinking. <laughs> and I tend to agree with the steam plant welders, whom I used to drink with at the 49ers Tavern near the university. Lachlan, they would chorus whenever I would lament essay grading or committee meetings or the lack of respect accorded the contemporary poet. You've never done one honest day's work in your life. <laughs> I want your love and I want it for free. I want your love and I want your revenge. I want your love. Ho, ho, ho. I want your love. I want your love. Ho, ho, ho. I want your love, love, love. Look, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs>